In this video, we're going to be talking about Bible literacy. Why is it important for you to know the Bible stories? I'm here with Carlton Bird, who is the head of Breath of Life, a ministry dedicated to helping people understand the Bible. Carlton, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here with you, Sam. Thank you. So, man, you preach like many sermons a week, and you study this book um, all your life, pretty much. And why does it matter that people should understand the Bible stories? If you want to know about Jesus, you got to know the Bible. Uh, the Bible is the written word of Christ. It is it expounds on who Christ is, expounds on his love, expounds on, expounds on his care for each and every one of us. So therefore, if you want to know more about Jesus, because it's through Jesus we're saved, you got to know his word. You got to know the Bible. So biblical literacy is so very, very important. So if you want to know about Jesus, you need to understand, um, you need to understand the Bible. And if you don't understand the Bible, then it's very difficult to understand the plan of salvation and who God is and all sorts. What if you don't believe? Let's go into that a little bit. You don't believe. Why does it matter for you to understand the story of David and the story of Adam and Eve and the story of Jesus and so on? Even if you're not a believer, does it matter that you know it or not? I think it's important that you know it because I think that even for persons who are not believers or unbelievers, as we would say, I think there are biblical stories and these biblical stories that we read, they do teach values. Uh, they do teach certain principles that govern individuals and govern our lives. And my hope and prayer is that even for those who are unbelievers, even those who don't believe, that they will read Bible stories. And through the Bible stories, they're able to grasp these values and these principles. And hopefully that will be the entering wedge where they will become a believer. So I think the Bible stories have value for believers as well as unbelievers. And for those who are unbelievers, to specifically answer your question, the values, the different principles that we learn, values of just being a good person, a, a, a loving person, a kind person, a hospitable person, uh, faith in, in whatever your faith is in, the supernatural, whatever it is. I, I do believe that biblical stories aid in that process. It seems that we've created these hygienic versions of the biblical narrative, like we we prefer to read the to watch cartoons about Bible stories than to read the Bible itself. We prefer to listen to people tell the stories rather than encounter the text itself. And I, we noticed many years ago that especially boys were not connecting with Scripture any longer. So you have David and Goliath, and Goliath is strong and powerful, and he's got a spear and shield. And we noticed that the boys were starting to, to role play and everybody wanted to be Goliath, you know, because David is weak and he's a little kid and so on. So how important is it for us to actually read the text, you know, to go back to whatever version of the text you have, you know, the New International Version, the Free Bible, the New King James Version, the King James. I don't understand the King James very well. I'm Brazilian, so I learned English later in life and and for me the king james is very difficult to read and understand others have memorized large portions of it so whatever version you've got how why is it important carlton for us to uh to to have an encounter with the word directly rather than by third party i think it's important for us to have a have an encounter with the word directly you know we've heard that text precept upon precept line upon line here a little there a little I think number one for me personally is memory. Um, by reading the word of God, it, it helped me, whatever version you read, KJV, NIV, as you said, uh, whatever version, it, it allows you to memorize scripture. And I, I think that's important. I know for me, because in specific instances in my life, there will be times where I need to be able to reference a scripture like that. You know, whether it was when I was a kid and I was in uh, church school and I was at sitting for a test and I was saying, Lord, I got to remember uh, what I've studied by me reading the word of God. I was able to reference the word of God through memory. Philippians 4, 13. I'm in that test. I test. I can do all things to Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know, um, when you're dealing with temptation, there had no temptation taking you. But such is common to man, but God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation uh, provide a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. And so therefore, I, I think in those times of need, when you have read the Bible, the literal word of God, you have memorized it, you're able to recall to memory what the words of the Bible, what the words uh, of God they have said. And so therefore, they're with you and you're they're at your disposal and you have access to them just when you need it most. Now, I want to be very clear, and I don't know if this is really what you want me to answer, but I'm going to answer anyway. I, I also think, though, there is merit in the biblical story, not just the little word, but creatively and innovatively, the word coming alive through story, through picture, through film. I, I think there is some merit with that because with that, you aren't necessarily learning the Bible word for word, but you're learning the concept of the story. You're learning the concept of the principle that is offered. And so I think there's merit there as well. Absolutely. And that's why Heroes was created in the first place, to reconnect um, our new generations with these heroes in a in a strong and courageous way. Um, what about your Bible reading yourself, you know, personally? Uh, you're a preacher. Um, you study the Bible for a living uh, and you try to help others understand it. What is your study like? You know, do you do you read it? How, how long does it take for you to prepare a message? Or um, do you read it in your devotional life? How do you connect with God through the reading of Scripture? Okay, very good. Both. Uh, I read it. You know, you say I read it for a living. That's correct. Uh, so with sermon preparation, it, you know, it can take from 20 hours to 30 hours for a good sermon. And, and when I read it, I, I marinate in the Word. And what I'll do is to get an understanding of the context of the text, I will read multiple versions. So I may start in the King James Version that gives us our traditional version. Then I may move to the New International Version. Then I may move to the Revised Standard Version. And then I may go to a paraphrase, um, the paraphrase, the Message Bible, the Living Bible, or even within our Seventh-day Adventist context, the Clear Word Bible. And all of those versions and paraphrases, they help give me an understanding of what I'm reading. They give me an understanding of the context of the text. And so therefore, the text can come alive. And so that's very important in my sermon presentation. In terms of my devotional life, I, I always yield, and maybe traditional, I, I yield to the King James Version. I'll read that, and then I'll probably go to either the Message Bible or the Clear Word Bible, and just to understand what is being said, and then to make it applicable to my life. So in both instances, for my living as a cleric, as a preacher, yes, read it, 20, 30 hours read it, multiple versions, and then for my personal devotion, I do the same. Fantastic. Did you grow up with the King James Version? Yes, I did. I, grew up with I, I did not. Uh, that's probably why I struggle, the heth and so on. I, I, it's, it's a lot harder for me. And that's why we have so many versions, so that we can, we can build a picture of it. Now, you also studied Hebrew and Greek. Um, and you know, you often refer to it as you studying it and so on. And, and tell us about this concept of exegesis of diving into the text as much as you can to understand what the text is saying in the context of what is, you know, of what is there. Um, and how important is it for us to constantly develop our knowledge of how to study scripture, even if you are not a professional minister or, or preacher and so on. Exegesis is critical to understand what was really being meant. Because if you're, if we're not careful, the devil can use the Bible as a very, very, very bad tool, a tool that can beat up people, a tool that uh, says some things, particularly in our living, our social living, that is not necessarily accurate. And so I think it's very important that we have exegesis because it's easier to have eisegesis, if you will, where people can just give their own opinions and preferences from scripture. So exegesis is critical. So that way we are sound in our Bible study and we are sound in our Bible preaching. And so we've got to understand the text, understand what the writer of the text is trying to convey, understand the context and culture even of the text. Very, very, very important, particularly in the world in which we live today. I find that this is critically, critically important because in the days in which we live today, everybody has access to all the resources that we as preachers have. 
So everyone, if we don't do careful study of the text, if we don't do careful exegesis, you better believe that there is a listener somewhere, whether it's in the church or even on the internet, who is going to say, oh, that's not really what the text is trying to say. So it's therefore critical that we have in-depth study, exegesis of the text, so we can properly expound on the text and make the text come alive. Since the pandemic, the average churchgoer is now listening to three to five sermons a week on YouTube. They can pick up the absolute best preachers out there. And I've noticed your numbers on YouTube going up. Um, and guys, if you want to listen to a great sermon, just type Carlton Bird and whatever comes up, listen to it because it's Praise fantastic. God. Praise so God. It's, it's possible that we are connecting with new generations, with new people that we wouldn't otherwise, because YouTube is just phenomenal at, right. um, at education and people learning and so on. But it also means that if you are preparing a message and if you're a pastor listening to this, your members are having access to a lot more knowledge and a lot more content. And there is a big pressure there, isn't it? That you, not, not in terms of performance, because the sermon we need to get out of the idea of performance, right. but in terms of how much you dig through, how much you understand of the text before you share it. Because as you said, there may be other people for, that will approach it in different ways. Do you find this, this conversation about the Bible and seeing it differently? Well, I see it this way. I disagree. I find it something else. Do you find this debate and discussion about Scripture um, something that is healthy, or would you rather not have it? It's healthy, but but, but you got to control the conversation. You know, you, you can't let the conversation control you because the devil can get in the conversation too. Uh, but it's healthy, but again, you got to control the conversation so that it goes in the direction uh, that it's intended, and it goes in the direction that glorifies God. Um, the reality is you talked about pressure. The reality is you you are right. P people know. People have access, and, and people can look, and people will tell you. And even in this in this world of YouTube, in this world of Facebook, people in the chat, they will tell you. and They'll know if it's, you know, if, if I can use this term, they'll know if it's gravy you're giving or potatoes. You know, I don't want to say meat and potatoes. I'll say grillers and potatoes. But they know. They know whether or not you're being true and authentic to the word. And they will let you know. Uh, you know, years ago, you know, our church members as well as the general public would just smile. Oh, listen to the pastor, you know. But today, they'll send you a Facebook post. They'll send you a tweet. And they'll send you a chat message on YouTube. And not only will you read it, but the entire world will read it. So, therefore, it's critical that, you know, you, you study to preach. I, I told someone said to me one time, and I've often repeated it, preaching is not decibel level. If you're going to shout, say something worth shouting about. And just because you've been called to preach doesn't mean that you don't have to study to preach. So you've been called, but you've got to study. And in that study, you've got to get in the word. You've got to dig in the word. And people will know whether or not you've studied or not in your preparation and presentation. Carlton Bird, thank you so much for joining us in this episode for the Heroes Campaign where we're launching the game. Thank you for being part of this journey with us. One day we're going to play together and we can see who gets the 12 questions faster. Uh, but for now, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. God bless you and God bless the great work you're doing. And if you would like to connect with these biblical heroes in a really fun way, then download Heroes to Bible Trivia Game. Just go to the Play Store in the App Store, uh, pre-order today, Heroes to the Bible Trivia Game.